So I'm starting with Cover FX Mattifying Primer, and this is the one with anti-acne treatment. And I'm just putting that all over my face to work as a base so that my foundation will go on a lot more smoothly. And then I'm going to go in with Benefits Erase Paste. This is in the shade number two, medium. This is just to cover up my dark, dark panda eye circles under there. And just work this in with your ring finger. Um, it really does combat the darkness. You can see the difference between one eye and the other. And I did the other eye off camera. And then I'm going in with the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. And my shade is 120 equals Y245. And I'm putting that all over my face. And I'm going to work that in with a Morphe foundation brush and just buff it in all over the face. I really like this foundation. It uh, is really good for on camera, but it's also good for just in real life as well. Oh, my earring popped out of my ear right there. Let's just put that bad man earring back in. So work in the foundation all over your face so you get a nice uh, smooth base to work off of. And it is a little bit lighter than my complexion, but I will warm that up later with some bronzer and then i'm going in with maybelline instant age rewind concealer in light this has that really nice spongy tip and that is just going to cover those dark circles fully and also bring some lightness under the eyes and i just worked that in with my real techniques sponge this is a really good drugstore alternative to the beauty blender you can usually find it for under ten dollars and it works really really well it's probably the best dupe for the beauty blender available and i'm going to set that under eye concealer with my kat von d shade and light palette you can see i'm using the two lightest shades i'm just tapping off the brush just to get rid of any excess this is so the concealer doesn't settle in any fine lines for me, my concealer always settles into fine lines, but I do my best to combat that. Then I'm going to use the Rimmel Stay Matte Press Powder. This is in shade 005 Silky Beige. So it is not a translucent powder, but it does match my skin tone very, very well. And that just kind of um, sets the rest of my face and the foundation and everything. And I'm going to go in with the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. This is actually a sample size I got from Sephora Order, and uh, it's quite a bit of product though, which was nice. And I'm just working that in the hollows of my cheeks. Make sure to blend it really, really well so that you don't just have a big brown muddy splotch on your face. Blend it kind of upwards, and then I also blend it kind of onto my temples, and then on the tops of my forehead where the light would always hit your face naturally. Just make sure you really, really blend your bronzing and contouring products really well. You don't want to have any harsh lines at all. And then I'm going in with the, oh, there's my husband. See how happy I am when he comes by. And I'm going in with the Urban Decay um, 8 Hour Afterglow Blush. And this is in the color Fetish. And I'm loving this blush lately. I'm using the Morphe E4 Blush Brush, which is the best blush brush of life. Um, this blush is looking a little bit bright on camera but I promise in real life it looked really really nice and blended. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Dim Light and I just use that after I do all my face products just to kind of bring a little bit of brightness to the middle of my face and it really does work quite well for that. And then I'm going in with the Becca Highlight Champagne Pop by Jaclyn Hill of course to highlight the tops of my cheekbones and I always like to highlight around my eyebrows as well, kind of above and underneath my eyebrow. I've always done it that way. I just like how the light hits it there. And now I'm going to do my eyebrows. I'm using the Urban Decay Brow Beater. This is in the shade Neutral Brown. I am really, really, really loving this pencil lately. I actually prefer it to the Anastasia Brow Wiz a little bit. I think the product in it is a little bit softer and not quite as waxy. So I guess it's just a personal preference, but I really like it. And it does have the spoolie on the one side so that you can always blend, blend, blend. You always want to do that when you're doing your eyebrows.
This is a kind of a long process, but it's always worth it in the end to have nicely blended natural looking eyebrows. That's how I like to do mine. Very, very natural looking. I always go in as a second step with the Stila Stale Day Waterproof Brow Color. This is in color dark and this just kind of adds a little bit more dimension and color to my brows. I just like this. This is kind of an unnecessary step but I do it all the time and then I go in with the Anastasia clear brow gel and this just sets everything make sure everything stays in place then I'm using the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion this is a very very tacky um, eye primer and it really really makes your eyeshadow last all day never smudges never creases it's a really really good product you just have to make sure you really get it in that's why I'm spending so much time putting it in because otherwise it'll kind of stick to your foundation on the outside and be weird anyway this is the star of the show this is the Anastasia shadow couture world traveler palette it comes with this really good brush and I use this brush all the time to actually apply the eyeshadow with I use it every time I use this palette it's probably the best eyeshadow brush that has ever come with an eyeshadow palette so I'm going in with soft peach as my transition color and you can see I had already worked that all over the crease and now I'm going in with Morocco which is kind of a really beautiful neutral just deepening up that color on the crease and making sure to blend in windshield wiper motions to get it all really really blended really well you can see I go over it a few different times there then I'm gonna go in with fudge and I kind of work that in just to the outer V of my eyelid darkening it up just want that darkness on the outside and then when there's less product on the brush then I start working it into the crease as well just to make sure it's really really well blended I do add a little bit more onto the brush just because I want to darken that up even more but I don't want to go too crazy and then I do the same thing on the other side working it in the outer V of the eyelid and blending it really really well really really well through the crease making sure everything is even of course you can always go back if you don't think it's even or if you want to perfect it or if you want to blend it more that's the trick just make sure everything is blended I'm gonna use this quo definer shadow brush and I'm gonna use the shade Bellini and I'm gonna put that all over my lid and I always put it a little bit over the brown on the outer V um, just because that blends really really well and I want to bring the lightness all the way across a little bit and make sure it's blended and just have that shadow kind of on the outer V and in the crease and then I'm going to go in with um, that same Anastasia brush again and just make sure everything is blended really well I'm going back I'm going to add a little bit of Morocco underneath my eyelid and that is using the other side of the Anastasia brush this is a nice alternative to using like a black eyeliner this is a lot softer of a look using my Sonia Kashuk Duo in Champagne Toast. I like this because it has a matte highlight shade in it, which I'm applying underneath my brow. And then it also has a shimmery highlight shade, which I'm using a pencil brush to apply to the inner corner of my eye lid to bring some lightness there. That's a Morphe M149 brush. And I'm using the Steel Stale Date Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. This is my favorite liquid eyeliner pen. Um, you can see I'm just turning it on its side and it kind of does the work for me. You just lay it down and it applies the product very, very easily. You barely have to move it. And doing the same thing to the other side. You could start in the middle if that's easier for you, but um, starting right in the inner corner is what I usually do. It all works out the same in the end, so do whatever is easier for you. I don't know what that was, but, oh, I think I got eyeshadow in my eye. Okay, so I'm gonna curl my lashes here. I am going to add fake lashes. I'm not gonna show you those because they ended up being really terrible and the eyelash glue was awful and I absolutely hated them. You'll see it in the final look, but they don't get a mention for me because they weren't very good. They were just like a 
fake knockoff brand. Anyway, this is the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara. This is my absolute favorite mascara of life. And I use it on the top and bottom lashes. I find it never transfers on me. I love it, love it, love it. And I'm doing the other side. But you always do this step prior to lashes just so that they blend well with the false eyelashes. And there you can see I have the lashes on there. Now I'm going in with the Lancome Lip Lover Gloss. This is in the shade Framboise Etoile. And this is a beautiful gloss. It tastes great, by the way. And it feels really nice on the lips as well. And this is the final look. 